You know, I get asked every day by salespeople, Jeremy, what are the most important skills I need to learn and in what order? Especially brand new salespeople. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down in a tier list for you, order of most important to the least important so you know what to focus on. So the very first skill that you need to acquire, the most important, is you need to learn how to become a problem finder and a problem solver, not a product pusher. Now what do I mean by problem finding? One thing you'll need to realize, especially if you're brand new, is when you first start talking to your prospects, most of them don't even know what their real problems are, right? Or maybe they know they have a problem, but they don't understand the depth of the problem or how bad the problem is. And especially, they don't understand the consequences of what happens if they don't do anything about solving the problem. So you wanna become really good at problem finding. That means helping them find problems. And how do you do that? by asking the right questions at the right time that builds a gap from where they are to where they want to be. That allows them to not only find one problem, but you're able to help them find maybe two or three or four other problems they didn't realize they had. So the most important thing that you have to learn is asking really good questions at the right time that helps them find problems they didn't even know they had or they didn't understand really the root cause or how it's affecting them. That's even more important than problem solving, right? Because if the prospect doesn't buy from you, then how can you solve their problem? See, problem solving happens after they purchase, not before. You want a lot of prospects to purchase, you need to be much better at what's called problem finding. So I'm gonna put this skill in the S tier because it is very crucial for you if you wanna succeed in sales, especially in the very beginning for sure. Now the second skill that you'll need to acquire is how to become effective at time management, all right? Here's what I mean by time management, is focusing on income producing activities every single hour you're at work. You know what most salespeople do? They get into the office, they check their email for 30 or 40 minutes, typing up emails, emailing people back, then they get on their social media on their phone, they look at that for 10 minutes about their grandma's cats or their cousins dating some other guy or whatever, then they go to the bathroom for five minutes, then they come back, and 45 minutes into their workday, they haven't done anything that's really income-producing activities. What's income-producing activities for salespeople? calling leads if you call outbound leads, like people have put in their name, email, phone number, asking you to call them back. Handling inbound leads if you have people book on your calendar. It could be cold calling if you're in an industry where you do a lot of cold call prospecting, okay? It could be you know getting back with a prospect who didn't buy from last week to answer their questions or overcoming a concern. That is income producing activities, okay? You have to schedule your day out on your calendar, we call it, a lot of people call it PTB, prospect time blocking. So certain hours of the day, you know you're only prospecting. Other hours of the day, maybe you're doing proposals. If you're in an industry where you work on proposals, you have to send those out and go over with your prospects. And it could be you know, meeting with prospects, answering questions, whatever you do, you're focused on income producing activities because that is the way you make money hanging out with Joe Blow over here at the coffee station, we're hearing him complain about how his leads suck and how he's not making enough money, is probably not an income producing activity. And most salespeople, as an email comes in, they go and look at the email, then they go back to prospecting. You wanna have certain times of the day that you check your email, and outside of that, you're focused on calling leads, closing prospects, and taking them through your pipeline. So focus on income producing activities. Now, although time management is really important for a brand new salesperson, I'm not gonna put that in the top tier. I'm not gonna put that in the S tier. I'm gonna rank that as uh, probably B tier. It's important, but not the most crucial thing you have to understand when you first start. Now, another crucial skill that you need to get really good at is how do you overcome your prospects' objections? Now. The first thing you need to understand is what is the real objection? So many salespeople have a prospect that says like, oh, I wanna think about it. And they go, well, what do you need to think about? You said you liked X, Y, Z, what's there to think about? And then the prospect does what? They get defensive, emotionally shut down, throw out more objections, and then you're hosed. You know what I'm talking about. So you need to first find out what the objection actually means. Let me give you an example. 
Let's say the prospect says, you know, this is too expensive. Do you know what that means to that prospect? Because to one prospect, that could mean they absolutely do not have the money for it. To another prospect, that means that maybe they don't have enough money for a couple of weeks and they need to ask their mom for the money or they need to move uh, money from a different department if you sold B2B into this solution. It could mean that they're talking with one of your competitors and you're more than their product. It could mean they already have a service or product for that with a different company that is cheaper than what you're offering. See, it could mean several different things. So when they give you the objection, you probably want to clarify what they actually mean. Oh, how do you mean? Or if it was a think it over objection, I could simply lean in and say, think it over? And I could use a confused tone, see my facial expression, think it over? Yeah, it's just a really big decision and I don't feel like we have the money for it. Well, now I know it's a money objection that I need to help them overcome. Now, although handling objections is very, very important, for a new salesperson, I'm gonna rank this as, drum roll, because I think I know where you think I'm gonna rank it, but I'm actually gonna rank it at tier C. Tier C, do you know why? Because here in a minute, I'm gonna show you another tier that's much higher to help you prevent objections from happening in the prospect's brain. So objection handling, although important, not the most important, for brand new reps. So the fourth skill that you have to acquire is objection prevention. Now, what do I mean by that? How do you prevent the objections you're currently getting from your prospects that's costing you this? How do you prevent it from even happening in the prospect's brain? Because, I mean, let's, let's understand what causes an objection. What causes an objection? You or the prospect? Well, I'm gonna suggest to you that it's actually you because what causes objections in a prospect's brain? Uncertainty. And where does uncertainty come from? Well, it comes from the words you've been taught to say and the questions you're asking or not asking and how you're using your tone that's triggering uncertainty in their mind that causes the very objections you hate getting. Like, I wanna think it over, do more research, we don't have the money, I could go on and on and on. So when you hear certain things from a prospect, that is like a red flag that you know when they say them to you that they might have an objection when you go to close them, it's up to you to see, to ask certain questions to get them to overcome it in their mind themselves so they never even bring it up when you try to close. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you sell B2B, business to business, and you're presenting in front of a boardroom of decision makers. There's eight people sitting there just watching you going through your presentation. Two of them you've already met, six don't even know you from Adam, but you know they're gonna influence the decision here. So let's say you're going through slide 34 and you look down and you notice Gretchen, poor Gretchen. Gretchen's at the end of the conference table. You go through slide 34 and you notice when you went through the slide, she folds her arms and she looks up like this and she's either confused or she doesn't agree with you or she's got some type of concern. You just can tell by her facial expression, she doesn't get it or she doesn't like it. But what do you do? Should you just hope and pray that the next 30 slides you're gonna go through is gonna magically convince Gretchen that you're all good and they're all gonna wanna buy? Or do you wanna find out what she's thinking and prevent the objection from happening? Well, I can tell you which one's gonna make you a lot more money. So you might simply look at Gretchen and be like, hey, um, Gretchen, I noticed that when we went through that last slide where we were talking about X and Y and Z, you seemed a bit hesitant. Um, what's behind that, just so I understand? Well, I didn't understand what you meant when you said X and Y and Z. Ah, okay, well in that case, answer the question, and then you keep going through the presentation, and now Gretchen doesn't have an objection when you go and close. See, that's an example of preventing objections from even happening. So. For this one, drum roll please, I'm going to rank this as tier A. Tier A, it's very important for you to learn how to prevent objections from happening in the prospect's brain if you wanna make a ton of money in sales. All right, we're gonna go over the next skill that you're gonna to need to acquire. This is one of the very most important ones if you wanna succeed at sales and do that quickly. Ooh, this is a really important one. Drum roll, it's eliminating sales resistance so your prospects let their guard down. What, Jeremy, I've never heard of that before. 
Ah, maybe that's why you're not selling as much as you could be. Like our clients, who are in the same industry as you are, they understand eliminating sales resistance extremely well. Now, what do I mean by eliminating sales resistance? Just so you understand, this is Behavioral Science 101, which is my background in college. Within the first seven to 12 seconds of any sales conversation you're ever gonna be involved in, virtual, on the phone, in person, your prospects subconsciously, we can't even help it as human beings, are picking up on your social cues. They're picking up on your verbal and nonverbal cues based on what you are saying and or asking and how you're asking it that trigger their brain, that could be scary, to react in one of two ways. Now, if you come across aggressive, what I mean by that is like really, really excited, like really salesy, like a lot of salespeople have been taught. Or if you come across like pushy, if you come across, let's say, attached, you know what I mean by that? Attached or even nervous. You get nervous when you're talking to prospects? If you come across that way and you don't understand the right questions to ask, you don't understand the tone when you ask them, that causes your prospect to go into what's called fight or flight mode. You ever heard of fight or flight mode? And they say things like, oh, no, we're not interested. Uh, hey, enough with the questions. Can you just tell me how much it's going to cost? I'll tell you if I'm interested. Or, no, we're good. Uh, just get to the point and I'll tell you if we want it. See, that is a triggered reaction based on how you're coming across to the prospect. Now, once you learn what we would train you if you're one of our clients, and you learn how to come across more neutral, more unbiased, like you're not quite sure you can even help yet, you don't know enough about their situation, you come across more calm, more collective, assertive, and especially, here's the key word, detached. You know the right questions to ask, you know how to use your tone, it causes the prospect to become so curious, curious enough where they want to engage and they want to open up to you. So the key part there is how do we get them to let their guard down where they become open to what we're actually talking about. And part of that, we call that the ABDs of selling. Write this down, always be disarming, all right? now. For this skill, I'm not gonna go into the technical aspects of that because we'd be here for seven days if I trained you on that. Eliminating sales resistance, ah, drum roll please. That is one of the most important, very most important, because if you can't get them to let their guard down, the sale's over at hello. Am I right? So that's gonna be ranked as an S tier. You heard it right, baby. S tier, very important for you if you wanna sell more. All right, for the very next most important thing that you're gonna to need to understand and learn if you wanna be successful in sales, and we're not gonna rank it yet, is being around other top performers. I can't tell you how many new salespeople come into the office or wherever they sell, they go into the break room during their breaks, they start talking to other salespeople or just sitting around, hanging out, talking to the sales veterans which most of them are broke or not selling that much, and they hear salespeople complaining all the time, my leads suck, my leads are bad, I get all the bad leads, my leads are broke, my leads are whatever, they have fear, the list goes on and on. I don't get paid enough, my comp plan sucks, my manager sucks, you know, my wife's mean to me, my husband's mean to me, and they just complain over and over again. And if you're brand new, and you're hearing that every day, what do you think you're gonna start doing? You're gonna start thinking the same way. You ever heard that saying, you are who you associate yourself with? Oh, that's really true. So when you get in new, you find the top few salespeople that are just crushing it. You show value to them. Don't just go knocking on the door like, how do I do this, how do I do that? You show value to them. Take them out to dinner. Don't even, don't even say, hey, I'd like to pick your brain. Oh God, for the love of Mary, don't say, I'd like to pick your brain because every top performer in any profession hears that. And basically what that means is like, oh, so you want me to give you free consulting. That's what we interpret that as. So don't say that. Just say, hey, you know, what are your thoughts about maybe going to lunch sometime? I you know, want to talk about X, Y, and Z. I've got some stuff maybe that I'm doing that could help you or something like that. Don't even focus on, I really need your help. Don't be desperate. Raise your status, okay? So hang out with the top performers that are crushing it the most and lo and behold, 
you're going to start doing more of what they do and lo and behold your sales are going to start going up so for this one i'm going to rank it very important this is tier drum roll please i'm going to rank it as tier a hanging around top performers very important for you to develop the right skills early on especially if you're brand new and if you're a sales veteran important to you for as well you don't want to be around broke salespeople that aren't going anywhere how's that going to help you sell more probably not right tier a ranking there you go now for the next most important skill that you're going to need to acquire is closing now here at seventh level we call that more commitment how do we get the prospect to commit to take the next step and purchase what we're offering so they can get their problem solved and get the results they want but for all of you hardcore closers out there that love the word closing closing is important now why and i'm going to show you where i'm going to rank it at in a second you might get angry if i don't rank it at the very top because most salespeople believe this and i'm going to ask you i'm going to ask you this a question first where is the sale made is it made at the very end when you ask an option close? Do you want the red one or the blue one, Charlie? Do you want to take delivery Wednesday at three or Friday at four? Uh, I'll take Friday at four. Is that when the prospect emotionally decided they wanted to buy what you're selling because you used an option close? No, they had already decided long before that from the discovery part of your conversation that built a big enough gap from where they are to where they wanted to be that they persuaded themselves that they wanted what you're offering. So when you used an option close, they just went with it. Because how many times do you use that same option close? Do you want the red one or the blue one, Charlie? Well, I, I'm not ready to buy yet. I didn't say I even wanted it. And you're like, oh, 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 what do I do? Oh, the option close didn't work there. You know why? Because you didn't build a big enough gap and they don't feel any urgency to want to change their situation. See, they might take you up on your assumptive clothes or just give it a try clothes or Benjamin Franklin clothes or the puppy dog clothes or the I mean imitation clothes I could go on a thousand closing lines but that's not when they decided to buy they bought despite of you using that closing line now on the flip side you can't just be like well uh, George uh, I guess let me know if you're interested you can email me later that's not gonna get you many closings either so I might lean in where I don't trigger any sales resistance at the very end. Do you feel like this could be the answer for you? See, that's more neutral and depending on what they say next depends on what I ask next. Closing as a percentage of actual sale is actually only 5% of that prospect wanting to buy. Do you know where the 85% is? It's during the engagement stage from helping them find out what their real situation is, to building a gap to where they want to be, to getting them to see what their future is going to look like once the newfound problems are solved and they have everything they want, that's where the sale is made, not a cheesy closing line at the end. Okay? Then you've got your presentation, which is, should only be about 10 to 15% of your process. So where am I going to rank closing? Now, for all of you ABCs of closing people always be closing the Glenn Gary Glenn Ross lovers of that movie how can I rank this without you getting upset with me because I'm gonna rank this at tier D tier D I love you look I made a bid under 33 million in straight commissions during my 17 year sales career as a W2 or 1099 rep selling in the trenches day in and day out like you do you think I knew how to close? I'm gonna go out on a limb saying yes, but it's not a big deal. Closing lines is not where the sale's made. It's made in the discovering part of that conversation and or conversations. That's where the sale's made, where you get the prospect to pull you in and sell themselves rather than you trying to push and pressure them at the very end. Because that's what average salespeople do. Love you, ranking D. Now, hey, if you wanna learn more tactical skills, cause I know I'm just ranking skills here, I'm not really going into the questions you need and the exact tone. You wanna learn that, you might wanna hit the subscribe button cause I am about to release a mofo. I am about to release an army of YouTube videos on the right questions at the right time and how to use your tone and how to get the prospect to close themselves rather than you trying to do it. So 
you might want to hit the subscribe button because I'm about to release an army of videos in the next three days. Now for the last and most important skill. I saved this for last. Drum roll, please. And you're going to be like, Jeremy, I can't believe it. It's your tonality. What? Jeremy, I your tonality. Did you know that your prospects, that human beings, don't even hear the words you say first? What do they hear? They hear your sounds of your voice. And they start to react based on how you sound, which that goes into what we call their reptilian part of their brain, or survival part of the brain. Then they start to interpret your words in what's called, we call it their midbrain. And then in their neocortex part of their brain, they actually hear your words and what they mean. So the very first most important thing you have to learn is how you're coming across. Now there's four types of tones, and I wanna make sure you understand. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the meaning of your words and your questions. Your tone is how your prospect interprets why you're even asking the question in the first place. So there's certain questions that you have to ask in more of a, a curious tone. Let's say if I sold uh, for a marketing agency, I'll just give you an, an example. Uh, John, can you walk me through? What do you guys do to, to generate new leads and, and clients just so I understand more? See, that's a curious tone, right? Now, when they hear my sound as a curious tone, they do what? Clarify and answer, actually answer the question. Open up because I'm curious. I come across curious. Now, how do I come across curious? My facial expressions. Uh, John, can you walk me through? See, that's a curious facial expression. Your face is your, what I like to call your remote control to the sound of your voice. It's the remote control to how your tonality comes across. Now, there's a confused tone. John, I'm not understanding. When you said X, how did you mean by that? See, that's a confused tone. Now, when I come across as a, having a confused tone, they come to my rescue because they feel like I didn't understand what they said and they clarify it for me. See what I'm doing there? Then there's a challenging tone. Now, let's say I get three-fourths of the way through a conversation. I ask what's called a consequence question, any PQ consequence question. What are the ramifications if you don't do anything about this? See, that's a challenging tone. And then there's other questions and words you have to use where you have to lean in and you're going to use more of a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy. John, um, what's really holding you back? from moving forward. See, that's a concern tone, right? And now John feels like I'm concerned for him if he doesn't solve his problems and get where he wants to go. So the most important thing, besides eliminating sales resistance to get them to let their guard down, besides becoming a problem finder, asking the right questions at the right time, is how you use your tone, your tonality. Verbal cues, sounds out of your mouth while they're talking, uh-huh. Ah, okay, now you're not gonna do that every two seconds, I'm exaggerating that, you spread that out. There's verbal pausing. Okay, but I'm not understanding, when you said, how did you mean by that? See, that's a pause, a verbal pause, or I could say a probing question. Why so important to you now though? See how I'm verbal pausing? That causes the prospect to think deeper about the question I'm asking, and then there's verbal pacing. That's how do you pace out long sentences or questions? How do you pace them out where it actually holds the prospect's attention? Let's say I'm gonna ask a consequence question. Let's say if I'm selling solar, I'm just gonna give a random industry, I've trained thousands in that space too. So what happens if you don't do anything about this and you keep you know, paying this power bill every month and they keep raising your rates every month like they always have, and now you're 70, 75 years old, but now the bill's three times as high, but now you're on a limited income. How would you pay for it at that point? See, I verbal paced that out. That held your attention. You want me to do it again for you so you can hear the pace? So what if you don't do anything about this and you know you keep being forced to pay these rate hikes like they always have done, but now you're 70, 75 years old and the bill's three times as high, but now you're on Social Security. How would you pay for it 
at that point. See, I verbal paced that whole question out. If I said that too fast, it's in one ear, out the other. But because I verbal paced it out and slowed down my tone, it forces the prospect to think deeper and internalize what I just asked. So for this ranking, grand ranking of all, this is uno number one, tier S. And that's your rankings, most important skills that you'll need to acquire if you wanna sell a ton and become a legend in sales. You're welcome.